Well, good morning. I'm Martin Tyner with Enoch Wildlife Rescue, and everybody knows my best friend here. This is Scout, uh, our golden eagle, and Scout, uh, Scout and I are, are kind of hanging out together, celebrating, uh, as you can see, my birthday. Um, and and I can't think of anybody better to hang out with than than one of my very best friends. Yes, you are, huh, bud? Yeah, you're my buddy. Such a good boy. And so, welcome to. Uh, our uh, video podcast uh, vlog Christmas. And uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm just kind of here. We're going to answer some questions. And uh, if anybody has any comments or anything, you're, you're certainly welcome to post. And DG, do we have a number to pull? Well, yeah, we do. But we kind of already gave it away. But I guess we'll go through the ceremony of it, right? Oh, uh, OK. So number nine, Martin's birthday. We say, yeah. happy birthday. Yeah. So do you want to go right to questions or do you want to go to the embarrassing photos and video I have to share? Oh, I, what did you do? Oh, not, let's, not much. Let's, let's, get the, let's get the painful stuff over. Let's go to the emb embarrassing videos. Okay, well, there's this. Oh, there I am. Yeah. That's, uh, that's my sweet Susan and I uh, with our our newborn, newborn daughter, Vicky, of course, she's 40, I think she's 41 now, if I remember correctly. So yeah, that, that was, um, that was my, uh, mustache, um, uh, John Denver look kind, kind of a day back in the day. And, uh, so that, that's, yeah, that's fairly embarrassing. So what, can we do a fundraiser to make you grow your mustache again? To make me grow my mustache again? You, you like, know, what would, no. What would it take? <laughs> like how much would we have to raise right now to, to make you grow your mustache? Well, the, that you'd have to talk to Susan about because she's very grateful that I shaved it off. Ah, okay. And, and so that's, that's up to Susan as far as, uh, as far as how much you'd have to bribe her. Got okay, that's that. Yeah, that's actually that's me on the floor uh, of the Utah State Legislature being honored uh, for 50 years of volunteerism as a wildlife rehabilitator, wildlife educator. So yeah, that's uh, that was very very nice. And in fact, that was that was on Susan's my anniversary. Uh, Susan did that. Now you can see that I was wearing a suit. Oh, we have one and more shot though. Wait a second. See, there it is. Uh, okay, I'm wearing a suit, and I, you know, you know what I'm wearing. This is what I'm wearing today. This is my dress, my dress clothes. This is what I like to wear. A suit is is just to me. It's just there's only two reasons to wear a suit, and that is to get married and to get buried. Otherwise, suits have so should serve no purpose whatsoever. So anyway, um, this is our state legislator. Um, and, uh, Susan contacted him and, and basically sent him a letter saying that we were, this is our, going to be our wedding anniversary, but this was also my 50th year as a volunteer, uh, caring for injured wildlife. And, uh, is there anything that, um, you know, that he could do, you know, write a letter to me or something along those lines. And he says, well, if you can get Martin up here, just, uh, let's let's bring him onto the floor of the state in, on the state house and to the legislature and and uh, and get him a, a standing ovation a round of applause for for his service and i did i do nothing about that other than uh you know for our anniversary susan wanted to go up to salt lake and so i thought that would be fine she wanted to go out to dinner and go up to salt lake and overnight at a at a uh, motel uh, and so that's kind of a luxury thing for us. And, and she says, and she says, uh, you know, the, can you wear, can you wear a, your suit? And I says, well, I don't know. I haven't worn it in, in decades and, and the suit fit. Okay. And, uh, says, yeah, I, I, the, you know, I can wear the suit, but why do you want me to wear a suit? And she says, well, you know, we, let's go to a nice dinner and, and I'd like you in a suit and tie. And, and so we, uh, got up to Salt Lake and got to the motel and, um, and, uh, the next morning we got up early. She says, put your suit on. I says, um, 
we're not going to go to dinner until this evening. She said, yeah, but put your suit on. I want you to wear it. And, and then she uh, kind of guided me up toward the, the state capitol building in, in Salt Lake City. And as we got up to the capitol building, I, uh, I says, what did you do? And she says, what do you mean? I says, what did, why, are we, you know, why are we at the state capitol? And she says, oh, we just wanted to go look around. And uh, so she, uh, by then I had a pretty good idea that she had done something sneaky. And, and so that was uh, a tremendous honor uh, that Susan put forth for me. And I, I love her for it and appreciate it. Last shot. Last shot. My, my sweet, beautiful Susan. Remember and where that is? Still got the stash there. Oh, still got the mustache. Yeah. I, I shaved the mustache off um, probably about 20 years ago. I have to remember, Susan and I have been married for 45 years, and and we were dating three years before that. So, so Susan and I have been best friends for 48 years, and uh, it's hard to imagine that she would put up with me for that long. And and you know, um, probably on my birthday is kind of a day that that I frequently kind of sit quietly because we don't generally do very much on my birthday that's you know we're you know we're always this time of year we're always super busy and we just don't really have any time to to do anything and and so you know most of the time on my birthday you know i'm hanging out with with scout and the other animals and susan's busy at the grooming shop or you know when i had the pet store you know i was busy with the pet store and and it's the holiday season and we're just swamped we're swamped with uh, grooming customers. We're swamped with business. I'm swamped with with the animals and and programs. So we just don't really don't do very much at all. In fact, today is very typical in in the fact that you know Susan's off at the grooming shop and and she's up to her eyeballs and in in grooming customers. And uh, you know she we got up this morning. She says, "I'm really sorry we didn't plan anything." I says, "You know that's fine. We don't we never plan anything. That's normal." Uh, for our birthday, she says, but I do want you to know that I love you. So she's very, very sweet and, and, and I adore her. But um, so I spend a lot of time, usually on my birthday, I'm out in the field, I'm with the animals and just pretty much uh, by myself doing, doing my chores and doing what I do. But it gives me a chance to kind of sit back and, and uh, kind of think about my life and contemplate things and you know, some people call it counting your blessings. Um, you know, you, I, I get to, re this is a great day to reflect back on, on what my life has been. And, you know, uh, 48 years with my best friend, Susan, 45 of them as my wife. Um, what an amazing blessing. Um, I, I have been so incredibly fortunate. You know, my, my two children are kind of the neatest people on the planet you know they're they're both uh, amazing adults uh my daughter is, is a nurse my boy's been a police officer for several years now and um you know they they're big into serving serving their community uh my uh both of them have three children so i have six grandchildren um beautiful beautiful grandchildren love them to death uh, and enjoy them. So I'm, I've been an incredibly fortunate um, to have um, had so many opportunities in my life. But you know, something that's kind of, kind of been um, sticking in my brain lately is how fortunate, how fortunate have I been? And, and I, I think back and, you know, it's, um, life is life is dangerous and to to have been on this earth for 68 years uh and to have been lived the the life that i have i truly won the lottery um it really doesn't get any better uh i and and this has happened to all of us you know yesterday was kind of a little bit of a reminder I was out um, running errands around around Cedar City and stopped at, at the grooming shop and did a few things for Susan, 
And uh, we and I spent an extra couple of minutes kind of visiting with Susan and some of the employees and stuff. And then I got in my car and started heading for home. And, you know, I heard ambulances ahead of me off in the distance. And and as I kind of turned the corner to cross over the top of the freeway, there was a terrible car accident. And, uh, you know, the ambulance, uh, they were in the process of extracting uh, a person from from the... uh, the car and the person on the stretcher and, you know, traffic was backed up. So it was kind of slow going past and, and getting them in the ambulance and the ambulance and racing to the hospital. Well, that accident happened about two minutes before I got there. And if I hadn't spent that extra couple of minutes, you know, busy with Susan and, and, and my employees, I would have been right there. And so the decision to, to hang out and visit for an extra couple of minutes was the right one. And we all have these decisions that we make on a daily basis. And most of us don't even know that um, the time that we um, stopped at the gas station, gassed up our car, put us five minutes behind, but there was a car accident that we would have been in if we hadn't. Or, you know, we skipped getting gas in the car and we kept driving driving along and so we were five minutes ahead of an accident. You know, uh, of what, two, three years ago, you know, uh, we were up in the Salt Lake area. My son was down from Wyoming. My daughter and her family were up in Salt Lake with us and we t- spent together as a family. And uh, we went to a, to a mall, to a shopping center. And, uh, you know, we walked through the stores, we ate at the food court and, and had had a nice time with the with the grandkids, and and then as we uh, left the mall, you know there was police starting to show up as we left the mall, and um, didn't see too much of. But by the time we pulled out of the parking lot, there was a lot of commotion with the police arriving, and um, right there in the food court where I and my family was, there was a shooting, and I and we didn't even know that until that night. Uh, listening to the news that there was a shooting at the mall and um, I don't think anybody was killed but there was a kind of a gang related situation shooting up there Uh, and so you know our timing you know we made the right decisions we I guess we ate the right foods and and that's the way our whole life kind of runs you know and, and not only in the last 68 years, you know, I've been so fortunate and have made the right decisions to, to, to still be here. But what about my parents? You know, they lived their whole lives. Um, and they obviously made the right decisions, um, because I'm here. And then you go back, um, to your grandparents and your great grandparents and all the way back. I'm, uh, mostly Scottish and English, but I've got a little Neanderthal in me as well. Uh, and so the primitive people, peoples, you know, 10, 20,000 years ago, they all had to have made the right decisions. How many decisions were made over the last hundreds of thousands of years um, that, that allows me to sit here with Scout? Um, that's, I think for all of us, I think, think the odds are incalculable, um, that, uh, we are all so blessed and, and because of that, we, we need to understand not to take our lives for granted. Um, there's so much that we are so fortunate to have, especially here. Um, and, uh, it just makes me, uh incredibly grateful that I that I can uh, do what I do care for the animals that I care for I love all of my friends and family and, and, and especially the the closeness of a, the relationship that Susan and I have so anyway that's kind of my soapbox I just it's just something that uh, that kind of hit me this morning um, my my blessings are beyond calculation 
Did original. you say soapbox or soap opera? Soapbox. Oh, okay. Well, see, now we have two more little video snippets about kind of on the same theme of uh, some things going really well. I'm going to go ahead and play this first one. And you can talk about it after. And it's a little rough because I took it from an article online. So this is like another little history run in the life of Martin. Thank you very much. Mr. Tyner averages 100 plus wildlife rescues a year and has never received a penny of state or federal funding for this work. Uh, this is truly amazing. Not bad for a, a dumb, severely dyslexic kid that everybody believed would never learn to read or write. Bogan exists as a, as a bot. So just, just a little snippet there from a news source. Yeah, actually what that snippet is, is um, again, much to my surprise, I, I knew absolutely nothing about it, but Susan maybe put it on a suit. Um, the, um, this was 25 years ago or so um you know 20 25 years ago the people of of cedar city uh they they had um uh, uh it, and it was it was winter time and it was um you know they had the the you know the kind of the doctor of the year and the school teacher of the year and the school principal of the year and uh you know, the police officer of the year and they they would do these for all of the different kinds of trades to, to honor people who've gone above and beyond uh and have dedicated their lives uh to service and um they the the people of, of cedar city voted me uh cedar city man of the year and so that's again it was a gr great honor to have, have been bestowed, bestowed with that. And I've got a, a little glass trophy in my uh, little case here that uh, that recognizes that. So I've got one more little clip here. I think that kind of shows uh, all the people out there who uh, kind of came together to support you. And that's simply looking at our website. If you go to the homepage under the recent donors tab, there's a link there that says thank you. And that goes to our contributors page, and it shows a lot of major contributors. It also shows a whole lot of recurring donors. And along with that, you can see the year, how long they've been contributing. And then we go down to donations just from 2023. And that goes on for quite a while. Those are all the peeps who have supported the critters and supported Martin's idea. And then you can tell this is 23. Let's take a little clip and we can go to 2016 and not so many people. So lots of changes and lots of support for our birthday boy. Yeah, you guys have been just amazing. It's really because of you, because of your love and, and your generosity that we are building this brand new Enoch Wildlife Rescue Center. Um, you know, after uh, more than 50 years, I really, to be honest with you, uh, I, it was so far out of my realm of possibility that um, I I never gave up, but I, I realistically um, could, couldn't believe that we could actually do this, that we could actually build this new facility, that we would have really a, a world-class wildlife rescue facility here in southern Utah. And uh, and I just, uh, every time I, I walk into the building and have watched the development of the new facility over the last many months and, you know, going from the, from bare ground that was leased to us by Enoch because of their love for the work that I do, they they donate, I shouldn't say donate, they lease us the ground for $1 a year for the next 100 years with the right to renew that lease twice. So we have the ground for like 300 years. Um, that, that kind of kindness and generosity from the city really, um, 
you know, helped us move forward. And, and then all of you, um, the big donors are wonderful, but the small donors that send me five bucks, um, that's, those are the donations that touch my heart. Those are the people that, um, are, are not, they're, they're like, they're, they're my people. They're like me. They're not rich. They're not famous. Um, they're, they have, um, very modest incomes, but they still want to help and they do. And, and so to each and every one of you, um, I, I can't express my gratitude enough for you guys helping us care, care for the critters and, and helping us build that new facility. And, um, it just, uh, like I said, it's, it's just made my life something incredibly special. And I thank you. So are we ready to see some of your birthday messages? Sure. Okay. This one's from Carolyn, wishing you a very happy birthday, Martin. Such a beautiful person. All the love and kindness you and Susan bring to this world is so amazing. Perhaps one day I can take an adventurous road trip. I'm in Canada about 30 hours drive away and visit your new wildlife rescue center. It would be so incredible to meet everyone, including the ambassadors. Happy birthday, Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. And, and yes, it would be my honor if you get a chance to come out to Southern Utah and so we can show you around a little bit of what we've been doing. From, from N, we'll say, thank you for being the kind and loving beings you are. I support your shift of responsibilities to training and rearing the next generation of humans who will follow your tradition in taking care of wildlife. As we age, we get physically tired, so can use our accumulated knowledge to teach and train next generations to take over the physically tiring responsibilities. The calendar is not necessary for me at all. I would rather you spend any money saved from the calendar production towards the care and well-being of the humans and the animals. I wish all the humans and animal creatures in your care a long life and good health and peace and joy in this life. Thank you, N. Well, thank you so much. And, and yeah, just uh, what, what is mentioned about the calendars, uh, we put out calendars for the last many years and and basically it was our gift to send back to to people who have made made donations to us and give them away for free to say thank you um this year because of all of the time that we have spent putting building this new wildlife rescue center and and also it kind of threw a a, a little monkey wrench in with with uh my, my heart procedure and, and, and trying to get healthy there. It, we, we've written a, a, a letters from Susan and I that, that we're sending out to everybody. Uh, but, um, we just, we just didn't have the time to put the calendars together this year. And so I think Susan will want to do them again next year. And so we apologize, um, that we're not passing out calendars this year. And please understand we, you know, that we are so grateful for everyone and everything they've done. From Donna, just a comment for Martin and the Vlogmas. Hi, Martin. I live in the state next door, Colorado. I fell into a very dark place earlier this year. I don't know what drew me to Raptor videos on YouTube, but it helped. YouTube then suggested your channel. I binged your channel, watched you help and feed those majestic creatures and their babies. I was inspired to do what you do, so now I volunteer a local Raptor rehab center cleaning cages. It is filthy work, but it helps those beautiful birds of prey, so it's worth it. It has helped my mental space greatly. I bet you didn't know you are rehabilitating humans as well. Thank you for what you're doing, D. Well, thank you, D, and thank you for taking the initiative to yourself go and, and assist a, a, a raptor rescue center. Um, you know, I, I tell everybody all the time, I says, you know, we all have the ability to do something. And, and even, even though, you know, some people, um, can do, can do more, but it's like you said, it's, it's not the person that, that gives me, um, thousands of dollars though. We're grateful for that. Believe me. Um, it, it, it is in the long run, it's the people that give me $5. It's the people that come and volunteer that want to clean cages and pull weeds and and do 
help to relieve some of the burden from from Susan and I uh, to to care for the animals. So thank you for being motivated and, and helping. To Martin, a very special one-of-a-kind person. May your day be joyful, and may you have many, many more birthdays. Sandy in Texas. Thank you, Sandy, and and we're working on it. Uh, so to, I took Susan to the uh, cardiologist yesterday. She forced me to, to take care of myself, and I have. And so I took Susan to the cardiologist yesterday, and she is going to go under uh, a lot of the same exact tests that I that I went through to check her, her heart and her health, because I, I told Susan that if I'm, if, if she's going to make me stick around for another 15, 20 years, then she has to stick around for another 15 or 20 years. So we're going to do our darndest to live as long as we can and to be able to teach as many people as possible so that there will always be a wildlife rescue center here in Utah. First of all, let me wish Martin a very happy birthday. I truly hope you enjoy your day and get to do something special for yourself. Now, I've been thinking about owl names, and it would be terribly clever if the letters owl were included in the name. I mean, how cute is that? So how about Howler or Prowler? Maybe other folks can think of something like that. And lastly, please watch for your Christmas greeting I'm sending. Best regards and hugs, Judy S. Well, thank you, Judy. That is a cute idea. That really is. Um, and, and so, yeah, uh, if people want to start sending in names for our new little screech owl, um, they're certainly welcome to. And, and uh, you know, he's uh, being added as a wildlife ambassador. So, you know, he'll be traveling and doing education with us. So we're excited for that. And so thank you. Martin's birthday. Hi, DG. A uh, birthday message and question for Martin, please. Happy birthday, Martin. Best wishes for an enjoyable and a healthy, exciting, and rewarding year to come. May the next 20 be as good as this one. Do you think that you and Susan will have a well-deserved holiday once the rescue facility is staffed and running smoothly or with Scout Pine in your absence? All the best, L. Well, L, um, let, let me tell you guys what my goal is so you understand. Um, I have, I have two goals that, that I'm trying to, try to achieve here, you know, and outside of the, the, the Enoch wildlife rescue. Um, but basically, uh, as I've said before, you know, we're, we're not long lived people and, um, you know, I'm the last one and my family's still alive. And so, um, I'm still. Uh, right now, I'm I'm 68 years old. Uh, if I can make it to 70, I will have broken the family curse. And so my first goal is I got to make it to 70. I've got to I've got to break this family curse. Uh, if not just for myself, but my for my children, my grandchildren, we we have to figure out a way to stay healthy, and and have a long life. The second goal is that my sweet wife Susan and I we've been married you know, 45 and a half years. And, um, and the, the truth of the matter is in, in our 45 plus years, uh, in marriage, Susan and I have never had a, a vacation. You know, Susan is, is such an angel. She puts up with the animals, you know, I'm, you know, if I'm not here in Southern Utah to care for the sick, injured, orphan wildlife, there is no one. And, and so, you know, my, my second goal is, is to, um, for our 50th wedding anniversary, which is in a little more than four years, for our 50th wedding anniversary, I, I would like to take Susan on a, on a real live, honest to goodness, uh, two week vacation um, you know, someplace where we can relax and we don't have to worry about the foundation and don't have to worry about the animals and, uh, see places in the world that we've never seen before, which is like every, everywhere. Um, and, and so that, 
that's my goal right now is to get the Enoch Wildlife Rescue to the point that it's staffed and sufficiently um, funded that, that Susan and I can, can go away for a couple of weeks. We've never done that. A couple of weeks and, um, and maybe take our cameras and uh, do a little photography and sightsee. And, you, you know, I, I have a pilot's license. Uh, and so I've flown a lot, but I, I have never flown on an airliner because we've never gone anywhere. Uh, we've just taken care of critters. So that's my, that's my, my second really big goal is to get our Enoch Wildlife Rescue Center to the point that Susan and I could, could take two weeks off uh, on our 50th wedding anniversary for a second honeymoon. Okay, Martin's birthday. Hi, DG. It seems that Martin and Susan have already received the computer desk and the file cabinet needs to be picked up. Please tell Martin and Susan that we appreciate all the work that they do to help the critters. As the volunteer mentioned today, we see the love that Martin and Susan feel for the critters that they help. My husband Jim and I were fortunate enough to be able to travel to Utah back in October and shake Martin and Susan's hand. We enjoyed seeing them and talking with them. We had the opportunity to see the rescue facility and see the wildlife ambassadors as well. Raptors are very pretty, but seeing them in person was such a great experience, and we hope to be back sometime in the future. Happy birthday, Martin. Greetings from Connecticut, Jim and Liz. Thank you, Jim and Liz. And yes, um, you know, we do have a, a wish list out uh, to basically uh equip the new enoch wildlife rescue center with all of the things that we need and and yes we have received the desk um and we have received actually quite a few gifts and we we have them in in, in storage at the moment we we haven't been we're not to the point where we can put them out at the enoch wildlife rescue i talked to my contractor and he says he would rather that we not bring start bringing stuff in because he still has contractors coming in and out and he wants, doesn't want anything uh, to, to walk away. And so he asked if we would please hold off until um, the, the interior is complete and, and then we can start moving in. And so I have um, uh, lots of gifts that have come in that I haven't opened the boxes and kind of wanted to save up uh, you know, we're moving in and, and ooh, ah, here are all the presents that we've received. Kind of want to do that as a big video. So there's a, a lot of gifts that I, I, I haven't looked at yet, but uh, we're excited that everybody is, is sending us gifts. Thank you. So speaking of people sending gifts to the birthday boy, our fundraiser started today at 1500 and currently it sits at 1800 and we've got wow. some, we got an anonymous donation. We've got a donation from uh, Nilo Tarani. I'm so sorry if I messed up your name. N-I-L-O-U. And then we've got another donation from Anonymous. And we've got two donations from Hope and one from Evelina, I think, AP. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, my gosh. Uh, you, you know, um, this, you know, it, it took us about three years of gifts and kindness from everyone to raise the money for the new Enoch Wildlife Rescue Center. And, and we've, we've raised enough money to build it. Um, but I'll, I'll be really honest with you. Every time I get a bill from the contractor, you know, I, we immediately pay the bill and I look at the bank account and watch the bank account get smaller and smaller and smaller. And, and I've had some conversations with, um, with our contractor, you know, I, I think we're okay, but I'm a little bit worried if we, if we go over budget, we're, we're going to have, a, we'll have some issues. And, and the contractor has been just extremely good about, you know, about watching every single penny. And, and so, you know, we're so close to having the, the construction of the facility done. And I, and it's, it's kind of a, a, a hope that, that uh, there won't be any surprises 
that we that we will be able to complete this project with the money that we have available because we don't borrow money we don't we never borrow um you know we only do what we can afford and, and so every penny that you guys give gives me another dollar of breathing room um for the new enix center and and also an, another dollar toward purchasing food and medical supplies for the animals so thank you Okay, so we got a whole lot of comments in the in the uh, live stream comment section, so we can go through some of those for you. Alora sure. says, I have already donated, but I plan on sending something from your Amazon wish list when I can find a good updated one. Couldn't find what I wanted and what I've seen so far. So we've got an update. Oh, wonderful. C says, happy birthday, Martin. I wish you all the best and good health. Well, thank you. And uh, we're doing our best for the good health part of it. And Mad World says, that's a great point Donna made. Wonderful humans like Martin and Susan and the team restore faith in humanity. Well, I, I'm very glad you guys feel that way because, uh, you know, in, in our world today, I'll tell you what, we need all the, the, the positive that we, that we can bring to this world. It's, this is a pretty scary place lately. And, and I'm glad that my my little efforts to care for the critters helps add to the to the goodness of our planet. T M says, "Big bucks, small bucks, like creatures big and small, are equally important. If you can't afford anything, please share, like, subscribe." Oh, absolutely! You know, um, you know. Another thing I always I always tell people that. Everybody knows someone that can help us. And so like, share, subscribe, that's wonderful. Um, talk to your friends. You know, and if you have somebody that, that, uh, that loves wildlife, um, that might be in a position, you know, go and, go and talk to them. It says, hey, we know this guy, he does this wildlife rescue work and um, you know, here's his website and, and here's his contact information. Uh, you might be interested in helping him. And so we can all um, help. In fact, the vast majority of donations that we've gotten has been from from word of mouth from people that, that contacted a friend and says, you know, you know, look at this guy, you know, look what he does and let's try to help him. So thank you. And Hope, who donated twice today, says joy to you on your birthday today and every day. Love to you and the critters. Well, thank you, Joy. And you know you're you're so kind and and we we so appreciate uh, everything that that you do for us and and Scout is being a little extra cuddly today. This is this is he hasn't had his breakfast yet. He I usually wait till after he has his breakfast and then we spend a little time together. But he's uh, quite enjoying our 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 little personal time together. And what what greater blessing on the planet than to, to spend some high quality time um, with your best friend, a golden eagle, on your birthday. You are enough says one thing on my bucket list is to have the opportunity to release a raptor. Well, you know, I, I'm not sure where you are, but you know, there are certainly, um, if there's a wildlife rescue center anywhere near, near where you are, um, you know, it's, it's, it's timing is really the truth. Uh, when I have something that's ready for release, it's ready for release, it has to go back to the wild. And, you know, I've had uh, people say, I would really like to release something and I, and I would call them up and says, you know, I've got uh, an owl or a hawk or an eagle or whatever that we're, that's ready to go. And they says, oh, wonderful. Um, I'm busy for the next couple of weeks, but uh, in, in three weeks, can I go do that? And I'm going, no. No, the, the animal needs to be released today. And so if you work with a, a, a wildlife rescue center and you just uh, you, you, you volunteer, you help them out and say, hey, I, you know, I would really love the honor of, of being able to participate in something like this. Then you're right there. And so when, the, when there is an animal that's ready for release, then you're at the top of the list. So that's kind of how that works. EP, who also donated today, says, first time I used my new visa, I can't think of anything doing better than this. Happy birthday. 
oh well thank you uh you know the i don't know if this if a you know breaking in your your credit card is a good thing but yes the the donations are mean a lot to us and we're very very grateful for you for your assistance Okay, and we've got another question, this one from Laura. Are you going to move yourself to the new facility or are you going to have to drive that every day? No, the, you know, that was one of the discussions that we had when we were relocating uh, from our Cedar Canyon property because of issues with Cedar City. Um, we were trying to figure out, you know, we need, we need a wildlife rescue facility. And here at my home, I've built some very, very modest wildlife rescue facilities that I've been using for the last, you know, 40 plus years. And, uh, you know, should should we just, you know, my I have an acre and should I just build uh, the new wildlife rescue facility on my acre of ground right here at my house? So I can just walk out the door and I'm right there. Um, or, you know, uh, Cedar City stepped up, or not Cedar City, Enix stepped up and, and um, offered me a piece of ground uh, to build a, a new wildlife rescue center. And they leased us the ground for $1 a year for the next 100 years. And so I discussed it with my board. I discussed it with you guys, uh, several of you over, over the last three years or so. And, and the idea of having a wildlife rescue center separated from my house um, means that I have a place to train volunteers. I, my wife and I will actually maybe even get our home back because uh, right now three quarters of my home uh, is filled with, with uh, wildlife foundation stuff. And so, and then once Susan and I are no longer capable of, of working and running a wildlife rescue center uh, and we have someone else, other people, volunteers and people take it over, um, it will, it, it'll be on its own. It'll be freestanding. And so the goal has always been to get the Enoch Wildlife Rescue Center to the point that it doesn't need Susan and I anymore because we're not going to live forever. And, and so having a separate facility. Now, please understand the, the separate facility is uh, less than five miles from my house. I can ride my bicycle to, to the new facility uh, very, very comfortably. So that's, that's why we're building the new facility at, at the new property in Enoch and not here at my home. Couple of questions about, or comments about Scout, my favorite golden eagle scout yeah he's kind of my favorite golden eagle too um you, you know it's it's hard for people to imagine but a golden eagle if handled properly um it's so incredibly intelligent but they can be the most gentle and affectionate of all birds of prey and, and so to dedicate my life to caring for sick injured orphan wildlife we don't socialize with them we want them to stay wild to have the privilege of having a golden eagle that i can develop a relationship with um is a blessing that i will that i will never forget and and it is truly one of the greatest things in my life laura asked isn't the yawning a crop drop well the, the yawning to be honest with you is just like you and i he's bored and he just yawns and yawns, yeah. Uh, don't you? And, and so, um, when they're moving food from the crop down into the gizzard, because birds have a, a, you can see how deep my finger goes in here. That's that's where his crop is, and that's that's a sack that's deflated right here that fills with food because he hasn't had his, his breakfast yet. And so this will fill up with food and actually stick out the size of a, like a baseball, huge pouch of food. And, and so when he is digesting the food down in his gizzard and he needs to move food from the crop down into the gizzard, he pushes his head down, which 
brings up the food a little bit and then he, and then he swallows it. And so that's how they bring the, the food out of the crop down into the gizzard. Okay, NTS, any potential person in mind to take over after you and Susan? Well, you know, I've, I've uh, been talking to quite a few people. The, here's what I need. Um, I need to get my foundation to the point that we can hire enough people to replace Susan and I. And, and the reality is the, the, the amount of work that Susan and I do to run foundation, uh, I need approximately six full-time employees. So it's not just a person. I, you know, I need people who are qualified in the wildlife rescue. I need people who are qualified in providing education program. I need more to Yeah, I know we're bored. I, so we, we need people that uh, have a, a lot of different skills that they can step up to run the foundation. And I need to get the foundation financially secured to that point that we can hire people because the truth is um, there is no, no person dumb enough on this planet uh, to do for free what Susan and I have been doing for the past 50 years. And so for the foundation to continue, it has, it, we have to be able to hire people. And, and yes, I do have some people in mind, but we're not quite able to hire them yet. T.S. says, retirement is well-deserved. I know you won't want to until the right persons come along to take your place. And that's, and that's very, very true. Um, you, you know, we have to have people who are passionate about, about our foundation. We need people that, that are dedicated, um, that wouldn't, wouldn't have a second thought of answering the telephone at 2 o'clock in the morning and it's police dispatch, and there's an eagle owl on the freeway that you got to go rescue. Uh, I I need those kinds of people, and uh, those kinds of people, unfortunately, are kind of few and far between. But they're there, and and uh, again, if 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 you are one of those kinds of people, uh, you know, give me a call. Let's talk. Like I said, right now we can't afford to, to pay people, but as the foundation continues to develop the volunteers that are willing to do this work will be the first ones in line for a paycheck. Alora says you're going to live forever. Oh, uh, you know, to be honest with you, um, I really don't think I would want to live forever. Uh, but I certainly uh, tooth. I want to live long enough. Certainly that, Enoch Wildlife Rescue doesn't need me anymore. That's something that's extremely important to me. And the, the second thing is I, I, I do not want to live a minute longer than my sweet wife, Susan. You know, um, you know I, 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 I can't imagine um, my life without her and and so we we've we we have to live both susan and i have to stay healthy for as long as possible and that's and that's what we're doing but uh to, to live forever i'm already tired <laughs> i don't want to live forever i just want to live long enough to make sure that that my work uh goes on rns why doesn't the federal government step in uh, because both state and federal government uh, does does not support wildlife rescue in any form, and in fact, I've I've been told on on a number of occasions that both the state and federal government believe that wildlife rescue is biologically insignificant, and they would rather that we not do this, and so so we don't get support from the state or federal government. Now some states are better, and I've you know I've talked to people that says well. My, my state, you know, the, the state, you know, really works well in cooperation with the wildlife rescue facilities in my state. And I says, well, that's incredible. That's wonderful. And I, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Um, the local regional office for the Division of Natural Resources here in Utah, uh, these are the greatest guys. 
guys and gals. These guys, you know, we've got a, a, an amazing working relationship, and and I uh, consider the vet, in fact, all of them, all of the 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 game wardens and biologists here in Southern Utah, I consider them all personal friends. Um, but up in Salt Lake, um, that's a little bit different story, and you know, they're not in the field. They're not down here with us. They're not seeing what we do. They, they're sitting in an office and they're, and they're doing paperwork. And, uh, and sometimes they're, they're not as uh, cooperative as we would like them to be. DAV says, I love what you all do. Well, thank you. Thank you. We, uh, like I said, down here in southern Utah, somebody has to take care of the critters, and and down here it just happens to be me. And Stephanie says, but the personal relationship with the critters is hard to be replaced, though. Well, it it, it is, and um, you know, Scout's a great example of that. Scout is bonded exclusively to me, and and for someone to take Scout and start doing educational programs with him. Um, that's going to take quite a while uh, for, for a scout to, to build a relationship and, and the bond that, that we have together. And it's the same with the other wildlife ambassadors. I mean, uh, Helen, the, our peregrine falcon, you know, she's very sweet and, and with a little bit, just a little bit of training, virtually anybody could hold her. Uh, Belle is also reasonably sociable, but would take a little more training than, than with Helen, uh, Scout, uh, you know, he can be dangerous. You know, he, he can, he's a, an extremely powerful animal and he can certainly be dangerous. And so it, with Scout, it will have to be kind of the right person that is willing to dedicate the time to develop this kind of a friendship. Marcella says, I wish I could have had the privilege to go volunteer and learn from you. My heart sings of joy every time I see one of your videos. Your service to wild animals will forever be remembered. Well, thank you. And, and uh, you know, like, like I said, we, we are looking for uh, volunteers, you know, but it's, it's, um, you, it has to be someone that lives here. It has to be someone that, that can be on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, you know, it's, this is, this is not, you know, we might go uh, a month and not have any injured animals come in and then, and then we might, um, be getting new animals in every day. And it's, so it's, it's someone that has to have somewhat of a flexible schedule. Okay. You are enough asks, do all eagles get turned over to Indian tribes when they pass away? Um, yes, um, to the best of my knowledge, I received a letter probably 20 years ago. Um, ba basically, uh, for the past 50 years, anything that came into my wildlife rescue center was, uh, that did not survive was, was packaged up and frozen and then, and then shipped to the U S fish and wildlife services feather lab. Uh, and they distribute the, the eagles. And it's my understanding that uh, for scientific research, for like universities and those kinds of things that would like to get an eagle from the Fish and Wildlife Service's Feather Lab um, is at the bottom of the list. Right, right now, um, the, the native people are at the top of the list. Uh, anything that comes in, uh, is is then distributed to the native people uh, for their ceremonial purposes, and, and so it's difficult. I, someone's knocking at my door. Come in. Hello. I'm sorry. They're not coming in. Well, anyway, so that that's. Kind of where they're at. Somebody may have just knocked on the door and left something. They that happens frequently. Well, we're coming up on the hour, Martin. 
Okay. Uh, any last things? Oh, yeah, I think you've got to go. I'll talk to you later. I've got something at my door. So we'll see ya. <laughs>